and we are live accidentally what's up steve headley my phone fell off the counter and <laughs> and when i caught it it went live so tonight's broadcast is actually going to be about uh, the sniper match tomorrow morning it's we are in mount pleasant tennessee sorry about the time mix up when we cross the line we're in central time zone so what we wanted to do tonight was come at you from the hotel. Um, it is an NRL match. What's up, 45 Auto? Got Ricky over here. What's up? Getting all his stuff ready. What's up, Skull? Yeah, so like I said, sorry guys. Uh, hit the button a little early. What's <laughs> up, Kenny? And Eli. Grinding Dust, Anthony Halls, Joaquin Jack Nava. So guys, the weather is going to be brutal tomorrow. We start off at 17 degrees. What's up, Robert Warren? How you doing, sir? Uh, we start off at uh, six, six o'clock is when the range opens for final zero. What's up, AT2? And what's up, Jen Loon? It's going well, going well. <laughs> you didn't win anything tonight, Tim Davis. So basically, we start off first thing in the morning, it's gonna be 17 degrees and the high tomorrow is supposed to be like 30, okay? So I thought this would be pretty cool to kind of come at you and I don't know, maybe you guys have a whole lot more experience. Wow, five degrees in Wichita. Uh, and I wanted to talk about some of the things with some of these ruck matches. Really? What is up, Anthony Halls? Good day, bloke. So you must be in Australia, I would think. Um, or England. Or England, but I would think Australia. But either way, so here we go. On a ruck match, you gotta be careful about what you wear because if you're doing any hiking, what you're gonna do is you're gonna elevate your temperature. Thanks, Michael, definitely have to layer up. And you're gonna sweat. And you're going to sweat. Well, the thing is, is when you do the hiking, you're going to stop and then you're going to get cold because Ooh, you're gonna be wet. Uh, and you're gonna be in a holding area until... <laughs> other feel like we've been in this hotel room before. No, this is actually a somewhat of a decent place. I'll give too, this one a few more stars than the last one. Right? Yeah, thanks, Three Crown. Yeah, this definitely has a few more uh, stars. There's a few more stars than the other ones. Go find me some stitch. Some dirty cop took them. Oh, man, I hate that. I hate that for you. They took it? Yeah, I guess they took a stitch. So, with that being said, you get up, you're carrying all your gear. Merino wool is your friend. Yes, it is, 45 Auto. So, we're going to talk about some of the gear. I'll kind of lay it out here, and I'll show you my setup. Hold on. Let me get it all balanced here. All right, so this is gonna be my pack setup. It is an Eberly stock. I will not be using the rifle inside of the pouch here. Um, what I've got in here is, we'll just go through all the gear. I've got a bigger pump pillow that's really light. It's the Sandstock gear. I've got it where I can get to it pretty quickly with these clips, which these are a lot lighter than standard carabiners. And then I also have the Bad MF attached to the back of the bag. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, shout out. Looks like a respectable hotel. Yeah, no crackheads in the, in the parking lot. So what I've got is I've got a really light sand sock gear here. This will be a rear bag. Um, it is not an Arc'teryx. This is actually the Everly stock. And then what I've got is on the Bad MF with the QDs. I can actually attach this here. So I've got it if I need it quickly on the QD. Like I said, I'm trying to do this one-handed. I think it's important to have this because what's up, Charles Tiffy? Because if you have a really light bag, I can actually put this in the rifle stock itself. So I'll have a rear bag attached to the rifle. So I'm just going to ruck with the rifle in my hands. I've got two of the G codes mounted to the front with the magazines. Um, you know, you can use these AICS style magazines. I've got a pin holder here. And then basically, when I get to the blind stage, what we found out is this is going to be three minute stages. So not a lot of time to find the targets and actually acquire them. And what I'm, what I'm planning on doing is spending one minute looking for the targets, and then I'll spend the other two trying to engage them. I'm trying to keep this pack really, really light. So what I've got here is I've got my data cards with the pen. I've got a pen on the outside as well. And then I've got the whiteboards, okay? So that's gonna be my setup for the back of the pack. As far as what I'm going to wear, um, you know, because this is one of the things I wanted to go over. What's up, Charles? Um, when I did the ruck match last year with Bryson, 
Bryson wore cotton, and I told him not to wear cotton, not to wear cotton. I, you know, try to beat in his head, but he just had cotton, and he froze his butt off. So we'll start with the outer jacket first. So the outer jacket, this is going to be an OR, and this has a hoodie on it, okay? This is a really thick jacket. You want something that has chambers in it because it's going to help quite a bit in keeping the heat in. Um, and then what I'm going to do is a Gore-Tex jacket over that. That should be sufficient enough with like a t-shirt, okay? But the wind is going to be blowing. Uh, so wool is the material to wear underneath, absolutely. Or, or you can use fleece like this. Now this is a thicker pile of fleece and fleece works really, really well when it gets wet, okay? Because when it gets wet, it'll wick it away from your body. If you get soaking wet, let's say you take a dump in the creek or something like that, and this is one of the things that, uh, that really kind of got me concerned is the match director said bring extra socks with you. He did say you should be able to get around most of, you know, I've got a bunch of base layer Patagonia stuff, but it doesn't keep me as, as warm as this fleece, this thicker fleece material. And so you got to be careful when you pick this up. I mean, smart wool is really, really good stuff. I love it. Works well. The OR base layers do well, but you're going to pay a lot for this stuff. I mean, typically a bottom is going to go about 80 bucks. So Rick, I'm going to show you some of his stuff. He actually has the smart wool. We are running the darn, tool, darn tough socks. And he's taking a couple different base layers just in case, but he's kind of doing the same thing where he's doing a windproof shell. And then right here, he actually picked up some windproof pants. He also picked up a new pack. It's actually pretty cool. I like the camo on it. It's, called, it's made by a company called Killick. And it does have rifle bearing capabilities. So you'll see that both of us are running the really right stuff tripods now. He got himself one. This is very similar to the Mystery Ranch rifle carrying system. It carries on the exterior. Yeah, the the stock goes in here and then locks into the top. So he does have that option to do that. We're both going to be running the SIG. Uh, 3000 BDX's. Big bag. He's going to be running a big bag as well. I got uh, my bad MF in here, but once. He's not going to run his bad MF. I got snacks. On... <laughs> yeah, so he's got food. Yeah, he's got the bad snacks. MF inside. I got my uh, fortune cookie. Trying to. A lot bag. of 556 five, ammo left. Ah, oh, I missed it. He's actually carrying the, uh, the mini fortune cookie. Yeah, mini fortune cookie, some hand warmers. We got mitts. That, you know you can shoot from they fold back and then in here's kestrel and some other you know my bad mf with all my junk these mags that are on here right now will go here actually so he's got them on the exterior of his belt i can put them here and then here and then also on the other side you can do the same so rick just picked that pack up and that pack ran 170 dollars i believe yeah. It's a nice pack. It reminds me a lot of an Osprey pack. I, I really like Osprey packs, but unfortunately they don't make rifle packs like that. Uh, <coughs> let me go ahead and continue to go through the gear. So I do have thermal bottoms as well that I'm going to carry just in case. You guys know that I run the Darn Tufts. These are the boot length. And let's see here. As far as boots, always try to get these are a set of Keens. If you want something that's going to be waterproof, windproof. The problem with it is if your feet get overheated, they will start to get cold when they get wet. Gore-Tex will make your feet perspire quite a bit, but you don't want something that's going to breathe through there too much. So, uh, good set of waterproof boots. I am going to take an extra pair of socks, but it doesn't hurt to have like two garbage bags. Worst case scenario, if you have to go through water that might be shin deep, you take the garbage bags, put them over your knees with the two rubber bands, and at least it'll help you get through that water, that deep water crossing, and all your stuff stays dry. As far as my jacket and pants and stuff, you guys might have heard of this company before. The stuff is extremely expensive. It's made by a company called Cry Precision, uh, but they come in. They come with the built-in knee pads. Normally, these are black. Uh, the black ones had mud all over them, so I didn't grab them. And it looks funny because <laughs> you're warm here in South Dakota. It's minus 13 below. Wind chill is minus 27. Yeah, no doubt about it. There's definitely some cold places, but when you've got to sit out in it all day long and you really are only getting the heart rate up for a bit and then you're going to get cold then it's going to get uh gets really cold on the cries it looks funny because it's like a pair of bikinis in the back but this is a stretchy material that doesn't limit your movement i'm all about that because if you bulk up too much hold on let me try to get back to this comment i missed it uh, 
We are in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, and they're having this big cold front. They've got some freezing rain coming in tonight. Uh, but these pants right here are really good. They don't limit the, uh, the movement. And then I've got the matching top. And what's cool about this is it has uh, armor in the elbows. So when you drop down to an elbow, like on a rock or something like that, those are like $300 pants. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, they're, they're not cheap. The other thing I want to talk about is mobility. So when you start to put all this gear on and you start to bulk up, you start to lose mobility, especially with like Gore-Tex jackets. Uh, there are some newer materials out here. Can you hold this for just a second? Right there. So like on this OR jacket, I've talked to you guys about this before maybe, but in the back, OR is the only company that actually has stretchy Gore-Tex. They actually make this for uh, special operations. For our military guys, uh, that's why you see Garantham wearing this stuff a lot as well. But this is really cool because you can bulk up, you can you can turn, and yeah, Eagle Eye does have knee padding uh, knee padding in the pants. So if you are putting a knee down on a metal grate or anything like that, like we did a GTI, you don't feel anything. So Charles Tiffy knows when you try to move around, you're layered up, your position, everything from your cheek weld and all that changes because you've just added you know two and a half three inches of material here. So this is something else we want to talk about. I know Rick wants to give a big shout out to this company. He actually bought me one as well. Uh, Yotech. I think we got the bag somewhere, but basically it's right a chamber here. indicator. There it is. It's a chamber indicator. Uh, we're gonna we're trying them out. We're demoing them, and uh, they work well because it's actually an AICS mag for the Voodoo on this one. They make them regular for the uh, for other actions as well, CZ that kind of stuff. But they do have a... What's cool about it is it has the lanyard here, so to hold the bolt yeah. open. I wonder if I can... So, yeah, it looks like a snack bag. That's what I thought, too. I was like, man, you got me snacks? And he's like, no, I got you a chamber indicator that doesn't come out. It's like a magazine. So, I will tell you I'm running the XLR chassis. It's uh, The name of the company, again, guys, is Yao Tech. They are 3D printed. They're, it's a good quality 3D print. There's a discount I know. Code too. And there's a discount code. It's actually Rick's discount code. I think it's, uh, it's uh, IY615 uh, or something like that. Hold on. It is a. Uh, Lead mining just ordered. Capital one. I is on Is Your Six. It's capital I and the Y and the number six, and it'll give you 15 off. So that's pretty cool. Hey Anthony, we can't do a demo of the chamber flag because on live, if you put so if you touch this. a rifle. Okay, uh, we won't touch it, but if you touch it, uh, they'll kill the feed. Oh, oh, all right, so I'll hide that. All right, so there is what it would look like, and it locks in, drops in like a regular mag, and then the elastic bungee there keeps the bolt actually keeps down. the bolt from flopping back and forth, just like a normal one does on a on a bolt action. Well, I will I'm, tell you, I run an XLR uh, JVMB Pro chassis. I did have to shave a little bit of the front of it off, yep. which only took me about five minutes. But uh, I had a little bit of clearance issue, but on the MPA, it went in no problem whatsoever. It's, so it's called Yotech. He says, okay, booger, no worries. Basically, it slides in like a regular magazine. It's got okay. holes in it, so there's no question, and it's a bright orange color. So when you have it in, uh, no like RO is going to... Bright reddish gonna call you out on it um as far as gloves what are you doing you're you're doing the mittens i'm doing the mittens so i can shoot with them if it's that cold um yeah no problem anthony typically i don't wear mittens typically i'll wear a glove now it's a little unfair but uh i'm not gonna say unfair but let me try i'm trying to share all this stuff with you guys i do run a set of uh or gloves like this and they have the sensors on the fingertips these are thin enough where i still have mobility really good mobility and if i wanted to go even thinner i carry another set of a like a thinselate glove that's made by or but it, it breathes a lot better because i still want the dexterity as far as a cap i don't like gore-tex where you're going to sleep with all that crap i'm actually going to take it off the bed and put it on the floor <laughs> but i uh, just wanted to show you guys this vowel uh what else did you want to cover anything uh, uh head covering you lose most of your heat from your head. Yep. So stuff like this toboggan here, that's OR. Well, of course, I'm going to run a toboggan like this. It's fleece lined. It's wool. This one is... Rick, has, uh, we, Rick picked this I up I picked today. this up at Walmart. Just something to stay warm. So I actually have another toboggan somewhere. It's got a light in it. <laughs> yeah, the other thing you want to think about is we call it a beanie. <laughs> call it a toboggan. 
Um, the other thing you want to think about is having some type of rag, uh, something that's like fleece. Uh, it's really good for wiping lenses off because if you start using your shirt, you can have oils on it. And you can start smearing the lenses. Uh, maybe some tissues for your nose. <laughs> but uh, other than that, carrying your man, 101 people on here, man, I really appreciate it. Um, I do have the AICS mag pouches uh, coming shortly. We sold out very, very quickly on those. I do have some of the bad MFs in stock. I got another shipment coming in next week, and we're working on some PRS rifle bags. Those are already going into production now. There we go. Let's see if they work. Uh, the PRS rifle bag that I'm designing is going to be like internal length, like 55 inches. Appreciate it, Anthony. Uh, because what I found is, is there's no real rifle bags where you could put a really long PRS rifle with a 30 inch barrel in and still have plenty of clearance and still have enough for the scope height. So I'm going to do uh, one that's like eight inches tall for a shotgun, for like three gun shotgun, and then one for uh, PRS rifles. Ray is, oh, hold on. Ray is, OR downtown Seattle Love Factory Seconds. Can't tell anything wrong. Yeah, OR makes some great stuff. Outdoor research. Yeah, um, one of the things about it, David, is you really have to have the gear, especially if you're going to shoot uh, matches like this. You don't want to make it completely miserable. I've done enough of that over the years, and we were just talking about it now. It's like, man, are we getting too old for this stuff? I don't think so. I think old is a state of mind, but uh, we're just going to go out there and have fun. My plan is blind stage, three minutes. That's a really short time is I'm gonna get up there, I'm gonna hit it with the SIGs, try to find as many targets as I can. Those are linked to the Kestrel. Where do you store loaded magazines to keep the water off them? Um, <clears throat> okay, so what I showed you guys was this and how it's mounted on the Bad MF. If I start to get rain in this one pocket right here, I actually have, give me just a second. This right here is the Eberly stock rain cover, and it will go over. Can you hold that for just a second? It's right there. Down a little bit. Yeah. So basically what this does, if it starts to rain or we get any type of snow or inclement weather, I can take this, put it over the entire assembly, and now everything will stay dry underneath there. The other thing about having a rain cover is if you shoot in a ruck match, Let's say we get there and I'm the first person to go. I'm gonna to have to wait for the rest of the squad pretty much. And if you're sitting on wet ground, it makes it miserable. You can take a rain cover like that or what I've told you guys in the past maybe is the, the really light ground cloth for a tent. You can lay it on the ground. You can actually wrap up with it. It helps quite a bit. We had some really bad winds last year and I just took it and wrapped up in it and it kept, me, kept the wind off of me really well. So yeah, we are in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. A gun guy says 55 gallon drum liner. That would work as well. <laughs> BSM 50 says pull the trigger on the Bushnell, Mr. Ray. Yeah, um, I, I did see an email had come in. How do you spell the loaded chamber indicators? I'm sending it right now. Okay, so hold on. He's gonna add it in the comments, but it's right here, guys. Yotech.com. O W. I think it's Yaltech. Yeah, Charles. Charles. The owner's name is Charlie. The owner's name is Charlie. What's up, Carrie Emery? But they got a and the discount short code for like is normal stuff. It's on there. It's capital I is your six, and the Y is also capital. So capital I S capital Y O U R, the number six for fifteen percent off. Yeah. What up, pops? Uh, I'll tell you something else too, guys. He has this really cool oh, yeah. low profile oh, I gotta uh, data card holder. Um, really nice. You know, I hate to say it because I'm still working on mine, but mine's going to be machined aluminum. Uh, this is 3D printed. And this is actually pretty cool if you haven't seen it. I had never seen one like this before. It addresses the issue with very little yeah, clearance. Yeah, between the sides. Guys, look how thin that is. This right here is a Picatinny click. Yeah. So what it does is it snaps onto your Picatinny. You hold it What's for just even a nicer is yeah, you there can, you go. You show them, and then you can do the that. data card. Put little, a new one in. The data card. I know it looks big on the back, but you can take a blank data card, slide, slide it, in, it in, and it holds it. And this is the flex wire. Yep. So yeah, big shot. And you can make it shorter as well by sliding this that yeah. way. 
But it works pretty damn good. Thanks, David Martin. Man, I was, 121 I was a folks little, in here. I was Big a little leery of this thing, and I started messing with it on my rifle, and I'm like, man, this really works well for those where there's no room between the scope caps. Yeah, because this is super thin, guys. I mean, that's yeah. the slimmest design I had seen, and it clicks on really, really <laughs> Here's well. There's a phone. Yeah, there's a phone for comparison, an iPhone. Yeah, you can't see it because it's too... Yeah, there you go. Like that. So, yeah, you'll be able to find those as well. I have no attachment to Yaltek whatsoever. E I don't either. I bought these... And then they actually uh, had sent me a couple, so. Okay, so three crowns. My design should have already been done, uh, but the machine actually, uh, the spindle went bad on it. They had to get that replaced, and so it's going to be just a little bit. I talked to them, but then I also had to machine QDs, and so that took precedent because I have to make more bags now. So uh, I have another order of QDs going in. Um, so if I had to answer the question three to four weeks, uh, also, been working on a really cool buckle design with someone. Rick and Ray, you should shoot the Punisher positional in June. Where's it uh, at? Un well, unfortunately, it depends oh, on when yeah. it is in June because we are not going to be able to go. Originally, we thought we could shoot in the Competition Dynamics June match for the Steel Safari. We are having to cancel because of Blade Show. Uh, our attendance has been requested, and now Rick <laughs> is uh, with Microtech. Uh, we can't take off that week. That's the biggest week um, yeah, in the all, knife industry. It's all about knives right now. So we have to be there. So unfortunately, we can't make that match. 123 watching with 44 thumbs up. Come on, you hippies. Come I on. appreciate it, Drake Bradley. Hit the button. Damn it, boy. All right, anything else? I don't know how much footage we're going to be able to get tomorrow because. I hope so, at least. Man, I'm hoping so, but because they're blind, we're not going to be able to kind of hand off the phones we, to get any um we did zero today and uh ray was done about this fast because of the cold <laughs> no i mean i hit everything i shot at i know so what the zero range today they didn't have any paper set out at all and what they had was they had uh three steels out i went one two three on the steels one two three on the steels and i went three on one three on one three on one and i was like all right that's it i'm done and so i went in the truck Rick went I through shot, a uh, lot of ammunition. I went through uh, 150 <laughs> rounds, I think, today. All right, so Vincent asked. I do have the SOCOM Elite. These will be ready. Um, they will definitely be ready this week sometime. Uh, they were getting the proof sent to me for the X-Ring logo. Like I said, that's going to be the special one when I put it on the website. I'm... I'm I think I'm only going to have... There's only going to be 10, guys. Well, it won't be 10 initially. I think it's only going to be 6 initially, and then I've got an order of LUDTs that I'm going to put on there that will be special, too. And they'll just have the X-Ring logo, clean, simple, nothing too large. Um, let me know how that data card works, Carrie wants to know. Oh, uh, I will. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Carrie Emery is the one that had told and me You got your that. SOCOM? They're my pants over here. Yeah, he actually carries a SOCOM as well, guys. This is a SOCOM Elite. His is, got to remember, this one's now hey, this 21 out. years guys, old. down here, down here I've been doing some testing. So these, uh, you guys may or may not know, but .6, and these are the darn tough socks. So I've had these for a while now, and basically I'm, I'm going... 0.6 against darn tough to see which one. Both lifetime warranty. He just couldn't find the matching pair. <laughs> no, that's not true. You know it. I know. He's been testing them. Uh, here is. This is that's the newer model. That's the exact model I'll be doing. Uh, this is the 21 year old model. Yeah, get that old ass stinky thing out of there. Whatever. And right there on this side of the blade is where it'll have the uh, X Ring Customs lo or the X Ring logo. So that's yeah, it. that's it. And you notice we prefer... Guys, these, these <laughs> don't fail in the sand or dirt or anything else. As much as I love the out the fronts. Um, Three Crown says I like the older version. For me, it's just habit now. I've been carrying it so long. But anyway, 128 folks in here. Does it come, with, uh, come in a straight blade with no serration? Charles Tiffy, no. I'm only selling things that... Work. I have been using and that I 100% believe in. Now, just because I like it doesn't mean everybody else likes it. It's only going to be offered one way. It is, <laughs> it is going to be the SOCOM Elite Auto, not the manual, partial serrated blade. That's it. Uh, Brian, this is an individual you can't match. You can the partial serrated. Yeah. Um, Tell me why. It's easier to sharpen. You don't have to sharpen that part. Now you only got half the blade to sharpen. So now what? 
X ray, you think I can get one with my logo yeah. on it? Uh, we'll have to talk. I uh, might be able to do that, but I'm not sure. It'll take a little bit. You might have to order like. Well, guys, we're going to try to come at you tomorrow if we can. What's up, Pops Quest, the Raise Wear the Highway? Uh, no, the problem with doing this Pops Quest is uh, I'll have a bunch of people that say, well, I want a stonewash blade. I don't want a, you know, a partial black tactical. I don't want plain edge. I want a Tonto. I don't want an SE. Because there's so many different there's skews. There's no reason to not have serrated. Yeah, so it, it's and the thing is, uh, I think honestly, as soon as they go online, they're they're probably going to last about five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, anyway, I appreciate the good luck. So, Just wanted to so get to you. So what it. you're saying is you probably won't get one anyway. Is well, no, saying? I'm not saying if they're fast, they're fast. I'm not giving anybody any pre warning on it or anything else. As soon as I put them in inventory, I'll do a. A live saying there, you know, special one is an inventory, and I'll do the same thing with the LUDTs, which is special two. But the LUDTs, I'll have ten of. Gotcha. Yeah. So, guys, I really appreciate you joining in. Uh, we'll let you know how we do tomorrow, and I hope you. I know some if of you guys, guys are in the area. Bring propane and a heater. <laughs> I know a lot <laughs> of you guys pack. might not be in the cars or anything like that. Hopefully, you enjoyed the performance center visit the other night. That was fun. Didn't buy rooms with two beds. Helps communication at the range. No, uh, it's going to be an individual match. So uh, we'll see what happens. We've never we never shot this far in the middle this of the state. This this far in the middle of the state. We never shot a match in Tennessee. Oh yeah. First time ever. I thought you meant distance. No, distance wise, we've been in New Mexico and all that. But guys, I hope you have a good evening and a great weekend. We will talk to you soon. Have Not a good one, folks. Out. Hit the thumbs up button. We'll see you. Peace out.